Welcome back. In the previous section, we learned about windowing. In this section, we will focus on the joins. So, let's start. Joins are one of the most common and desirable features of any data system. You might be working with a batch system or a real time system. In both cases, at some point, you would need to join two data sets. In the Kafka Streams framework, your data sets are abstracted into two categories K stream, K table, and global K table. Hence, you would expect the capability to join a combination of these two types of data sets. Kafka Streams API supports following join operations. Before we learn the mechanics of these four types of joins, it is essential to list down some preconditions and limitations for joining two data sets in Kafka. Like any other system, joins in Kafka are performed over record keys. Hence, your K stream or K table must have a valid key. If you do not have a key or the key is null, you cannot perform a join. There is only one exception and that is global K table. Non-key based joins are allowed with K stream to global K table joins. All other joins are only key based joins. The input topics of the join left side and the right side must have the same number of partitions and data on both the topics must be co-partitioned. That means all applications that write to the input topics must have the same partitioning strategy so that records with the same key are delivered to the same partition number. If the inputs of a join are not co-partitioned yet, you must ensure this manually by rewriting the data into a new topic that has the same number of partitions and uses the same partitioner. This is a mandatory requirement for parallel processing in Kafka. There is only one exception to this rule and that is again global K table. Co-partitioning is not compulsory for K stream to global K table joins and that's obvious because all partitions of the global K table are made available to each instance. That is each stream's task has a full copy of the global K table, right? Hence co-partitioning is not needed for joining global K table. As listed in the table, inner joins and left outer joins are supported everywhere. But you must remember that the Kafka does not have a method for implementing right outer joins. However, you can easily perform right outer joins by swapping left and right side datasets. But this swapping is only allowed with the K stream to K stream and K table to K table joins. In other cases, such as K stream to K table, and K stream to global K table, the stream, I mean the K stream must be on the left side of the join. So, the right outer join is not possible in these two cases because you cannot swap the orders. Finally, full outer joins are available for the first three cases. However, it is not allowed with the global K table. I have also listed the outcome of the join operations. For example, when you join a K stream to another K stream, the result of the join is going to be a new K stream. Similarly, other outcome types are listed here. Finally, the K stream to K stream join must be a windowed join and all others are always non-windowed joins. We'll learn all this with appropriate examples. So, if you still have some doubts about the joins, hold on until we create examples in the following lectures. Great, that's all for the introduction to joins. See you in the next lecture. Keep learning and keep growing.